New year, new haircut, new underappreciated person in STEM history. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to The Stimulus. I'm Steph Evans, and welcome to STEM History, the show where I talk about people in STEM that you may not have heard about in history classes, but you probably should have. This week, we're talking about Bessie Blount Griffin, also known by her maiden name, Bessie Blount, a black inventor, physical therapist, and forensic scientist that quietly went about changing the lives of the amputees while receiving virtually no recognition due to her race. But let's go back to the beginning. Bessie Virginia Blount was born on November 24, 1914 in Hickory, Virginia. Blount began her education at Diggs Chapel Elementary School, a school built by African Americans after the Civil War so that their children would have an opportunity to get an education. During her years in elementary school, it was a common practice for teachers to discourage lefties from writing with their left hands. The teacher would frequently rap on Bessie's knuckles every time she picked up a pencil with her left hand. As a result, Bessie not only taught herself how to write with both hands, but also how to write with her feet and holding a pencil between her teeth. This would actually prove to be an incredibly useful skill later in her life during her work in physical therapy. Unfortunately, after Bessie's family moved to New Jersey, she was unable to continue her education beyond the sixth grade. Due to lack of resources and segregation, black children simply couldn't progress any further than that. But that didn't stop Bessie. She continued her education on her own and went on to earn the equivalent of a GED. After completing her GED, Bessie went on to study physical therapy at Union Junior College and Panzer College of Physical Education. She also traveled to Chicago for additional physical therapy training. Blount wrapped up her education just as World War II was beginning to come to a close, and she immediately volunteered with the Grey Ladies, an organization run by the Red Cross, and began working with amputees from the front lines, helping them learn how to perform basic tasks without the limbs that they had previously relied heavily upon. During this time, she noticed that one of the tasks that proved most challenging for amputees that were missing their hands or their arms was eating, which could be very damaging to their self-esteem and their sense of independence. As a result, in 1951, Bessie invented an electronic device that helped amputees eat by delivering bites of food to the patient at their own pace. In order to receive food, all the patient had to do was bite down on a mouthpiece connected to a rubber tube, and the device would deliver the next mouthful of food. Despite this invention being instrumental to amputees, the American Veterans Administration refused to even allow Bessie to demonstrate her invention, likely due to her being a black woman. As a result, Bessie donated her invention to the French government in 1952. You snooze due to racism and misogyny, you lose. Despite the VA blowing her off, Bessie's invention did receive some of the recognition it deserves. In fact, the American College of Surgeons called it a, quote, most ingenious apparatus. While the American Veterans Administration was ignoring her request to demonstrate her feeding device, Bessie was busy inventing another device to help the physically disabled. She devised a portable receptacle support, which would allow a person to hold something close up to their face, like a cup or a bowl, by hanging it around the person's neck with a support attachment. In March of 1948, she filed a patent, and the patent was granted in April of 1951. Bessie continued her physical therapy work, at one point working as a physical therapist for Thomas Edison's son Theodore, caring for his mother-in-law. During this time, she befriended Theodore and actually continued her inventing work while she was in his home. She invented the disposable cardboard emesis basin, which is used to catch fluids or debris during such operations as cleaning a wound. Again, the American Veterans Administration refused to accept her invention, so again, another foreign government, Belgium in this case, capitalized on its ignorance purchasing the design from Bessie. In addition to her inventions, Bessie also began analyzing the connections between physical health and handwriting characteristics while she was working in various hospitals. She noticed that, to some extent, a person's handwriting can reflect that person's overall health. She went on to publish her findings in a paper on medical graphology, or the study of handwriting, as it tied to the medical field. In the late 1960s, Bessie made a career change, becoming a forensic scientist for the Vineland Police Department and the Norfolk Police Department after her paper on medical graphology gained some attention. By the time the mid-70s rolled around, Bessie had become the chief document examiner at the Portsmouth Police Department, and in 1977, after having her application to work at the FBI turned down by Director J. Edgar Hoover, she was invited to train and work at the Document Division of Scotland Yard in England, making her the first black woman to work there. Bessie continued her career as a forensic scientist into the 1990s, running her own businesses and consulting until she was 83. During this time, she used her expertise in graphology to study slave papers and Civil War documents, and verify the authenticity of documents that contained treaties between Native Americans and the United States. Bessie's lifetime of achievements didn't stop in the sciences. She fought for desegregation of state-supported institutions, wrote many columns for various newspapers covering current events, such as Lyndon B. Johnson's presidential nomination, and even worked in public relations for the 
NAACP. Bessie Blount Griffin died on December 30th, 2009 at the age of 95. Throughout her life, Bessie Blount Griffin quietly achieved more than most white men and women with almost none of the recognition due to her race. Even today, while doing research for this video, you can see her image is frequently used for other black female inventors, which serves as a reminder of how careless we as a society have been with the history of black women and how far we have to go to give them the recognition that they deserve. Bessie impacted the lives of countless amputees, many of which served this nation on the front lines of World War II. Time and again, the United States government refused to acknowledge her achievements due to her race and her gender. In 1953, while appearing on the Philadelphia television show The Big Idea, the first of her race and her gender to do so, Bessie stated something that should be common sense. A black woman can invent something for the benefit of humankind. Bessie Blount Griffin certainly proved this statement to be true multiple times throughout her career, and I hope this video helps get her a small portion of the appreciation she is entitled to in the history books. So that does it for this episode of STEM History. If you'd like to learn more about the life and achievements of Bessie Blount Griffin, I will include links to my sources down below, along with links to all of my social media and my Patreon page, so feel free to check that out in your free time. If you know of any amazing STEM historical figures that you think deserve more recognition, leave them in the comment section down below or send them to me on Twitter at, at @thestimulus using the hashtag STEM History and they just might make it into a video. If you like how the STEM History series is going and you don't want to miss out on any of my other STEM related content, feel free to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of my future videos. But with that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay well, stay awesome, and I will see you next time.